Okay, so let's try this. 17.1b, finding a trig ratio from a given trig ratio. Um, starting off with a couple definitions. First off, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction of integers, meaning that it's a nice number over a nice number. So you have examples of 1 half, negative 56 over 27. 5.2 could be written as 5 and 2 tenths, um, which could also be 52 tenths. Um, again, all nice numbers, so you're good there. Uh, 0 0.3 bar, that is a repeating decimal, but we know that better as 1 third. And then radical 100, of course, we know is 10. Then you have something called irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are very common. They are numbers that are defined as non-terminating and non-repeating decimals. I apologize for my handwriting. I'm still learning to use the stylus very well. Um, so if you were to plug pi into your calculator, you would get 3.14 blah, 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 blah. It's a decimal that is non-terminating, meaning it has no end. And it also does not end up repeating, such as the 0 0.3 above ends up repeating. Um, so that's what an irrational number is. A lot of times root 2 is one of your most common irrational numbers that you'll see. Anything that has a root 2. Root 2, 2 root 2, 3 root 2, 4 root 2, 5 root 2. All of those end up being irrational because they have that root 2 with them. Um, in part of today's assignment, they ask for exact answers, not decimal approximations. So that means we want to leave it in radical form. And when we leave things in radical form, we have to draw a tree for it often, but also there's one big idea where we have to get a radical off the denominator. And this is called rationalizing the denominator. And if what I'm doing doesn't make sense to you, you can always uh, look it up on YouTube. I'm sure there are a million other teachers that have talked about it. But I'm going to show you really quickly with this. I'm going to ignore the that part right there and jump right here. So this, this right here, 2 over root 7, is a perfectly fine answer except for the fact that we want that radical off the denominator. So how do I multiply or how do I get it off the denominator? What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by rad 7 over rad 7. Now where did I get the rad 7 from? It's because it's what's on the denominator over here. Now what is this fraction as a whole equal to? Root 7 over root 7? It's equal to 1. So I'm taking the original fraction and technically multiplying it by 1. So I'm not changing the value of the fraction at all. This is just going to help me to um, get rid of that radical on the denominator. So on the top, 2 times rad 7 gives me 2 rad 7. And on the bottom, rad 7 times rad 7 gives me rad 49. Well, rad 49 simplifies. Write that 2 a little bit better. Sorry, as I said, I'm getting used to this stylus. 2 rad 7 over rad 49 is just 7. Now the shortcut... Whenever you take a radical and you multiply it by itself, you're going to end up getting that same number just outside of the radical because it ends up squaring and then you square root it and it ends up working out. So 2 root 7 over 7 is how I want the answer instead of this form with the radical on the bottom. Okay, um, that's the most common one you'll see. If I looked at root 3 over root 15, I can reduce that one first. I can call that root... What, 3 over 15, since they're both under radicals, you can reduce it to 1 over 5. Square root of 1 over the square root of 5. Well, what is the square root of 1? Square root of 1 is just 1 over root 5. And then you would multiply. It wants me to zoom. Multiply by root 5 over root 5. And that gives you 1 root 5 on top. And on the bottom root 25, which ends up equaling 5. That would be your simplified form. Okay? And then this last one over here, when you have multiple things going on the denominator, you're still going to multiply by a radical over a radical. You do not need to multiply by the 2, though. You can get by with just multiplying by rad 5 over rad 5. In addition, you could always reduce those guys beforehand because... 
they're both outside a radical. So you really have negative 6 times rad 5 on top, which is negative 6 rad 5. And then on the bottom, uh, rad 5 times rad 5 would be 5. So that's how that one would simplify. So what's the purpose in doing all this? Well, let's see. Multiplying radicals, pretty easy. You multiply outside with outside. That gets you your new outside. Inside with outside. Uh, inside gives you your new inside. That's your basic rule for that. When you square a radical, you have to square both the number in front and the radical itself. So there's squaring the number in front, there's squaring the radical itself. X squared shows up like that, and when you square a radical, <laughs> excuse me, it gets rid of the radical, leaving you with just Y. So those are just a couple radical rules, and you'll see them as they go. So how do you do the problems from this section? Well, first off, we're using this theta thing again, spelled T-H-E-T-A. It's a Greek letter. Um, it's used just like X or Y would be used. Um, so it gives us unknown value, or it's a, it's a variable, just like X or Y are. So I know that the cosine of theta is 2 root 6 over 7. So I'm going to draw a triangle. And I'm going to label an angle. Try not to label your right angle, but label any other angle theta. So I'm going to call that one theta. And they have given me cosine. So from Sokotoa, I know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if they're telling me that cosine is 2 root 6 over 7, they're telling me that this is my adjacent side and this is my hypotenuse. So coming over to my triangle that I just drew, the hypotenuse I find easiest to pick. That one's going to be there. And then which of the other two sides is the adjacent? Well, it's the one of the two sides that actually makes up the angle. Do you see how this side right here helps make up that angle theta? This one doesn't. It just kind of crosses over. That would be your opposite. So my adjacent, I'm going to label as 2 rad 6. So taking what they have given me, I now know two sides of the triangle. They're asking me to find tangent. So I'm going to switch colors here, see if I can figure out how to switch colors. I don't know how to... Let's see, can I change colors? There we go. All right, let's change colors. I don't like that color. How about this one? Okay, so this is the work that I'm actually going to do for the problem. So to find tangent... Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I need opposite, which would be this one, over adjacent. Well, I know adjacent. So let's see. Tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is going to be equal to opposite. Sorry, that equal sign is bugging me. Equal to opposite over not hypotenuse, adjacent. Sorry, I was looking at something else. So I know that the adjacent is currently 2 rad 6. I don't know what the opposite is, though, from over here. So what I need to do, and you saw this on last night's homework, is if you know two sides of a right triangle, the way you find the third side is Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to take 2 root 6, square it. Opposite side, I'm going to call B, and I don't know it. And C is always your hypotenuse, so 7 squared. So this is why we did that little radical review. So 2 root 6 squared, I have 2 squared, and then root 6 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, root 6 squared is 6, 4 times 6 is 24, so that whole thing is 24, plus b squared equals 7 squared, which is 49, so I'm going to subtract my 24, and b squared is equal to 49, 39, 29, 25. So when I square root that, b equals 5. So guess what? I just found my opposite. 
it's five. So coming back to what the question was asking me for, it was asking me for tangent. I was up here in this corner here. I now know that the opposite is five. So my answer is five over two root six. I just need to get that radical off the bottom. So what am I gonna do? Mul multiply by root six over root six. That gives me five times radical six on the top, or five rad six. On the bottom, I have two, because two times this is technically a one. And then rad six times rad six would be six. So two times rad six, nope, two times just six, because the radical goes away. Gives me a final answer that the tangent of theta is equal to five rad six over 12. So it seems like a lot of work. It's actually not. It's mainly drawing the picture and then using Pythagorean theorem to find your missing side to set up your new ratio. Okay, let's try this last one here. Find the sine of theta if you know the tangent of theta is 3 root 3 over 5. So I'm going to go back to my blue color and do what's given to me. So again, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I know this is opposite, and I know this is adjacent. So if I draw my triangle, there's my right triangle or my right angle. I get in the habit of always labeling the same one theta. So if I label the top one theta, I always label the top one. That way I never have to worry about where's opposite, where's adjacent, because it moves around. Um, and I'm going to label my sides. Opposite theta, that would be down here. That's 3 root 3. Adjacent is 5. Now, sine, let me get my answer area set up. Sine, oops, sorry. I need to get one of those palm rejection things. Sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Again, from Sokotoa. Well, I know that opposite is 3 root 3. I don't know what the hypotenuse is. So, I come back here, and what do I know? I know two sides of a triangle, of a right triangle. So, I'm going to use my a squared plus b squared equals c squared, knowing that c, or the hypotenuse, is what I don't know in this case. So, 3 root 3 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared. So let's see, 3 root 3 squared, that's 3 squared and root 3 squared, or 9 times 3 which is 27 plus 25 is equal to c squared. What is 27 plus 25? That's 52 is equal to c squared. So square root, I don't think I can go any further down. Nope. So c is equal to radical 52. Now, I don't like radical 52. I'm going to draw a tree for it. Radical 52, I'm going to make a 2 times 26, 26 breaks down into 2 times 13, and let's see, two twos means I can take out a 2, and I have a radical 13 left inside. So what do I do with that third side? Come back up here, funny, it says sine O, it's supposed to say sine theta, is equal to 2 rad 13, that's that hypotenuse I just found. And that's ugly, a little too much of a perfectionist for this. So. What I'm going to need to do at this point is I need to multiply. I need to figure out how to make a dot. Um, and then what am I going to multiply by? Well, the rad 3 isn't giving me a problem. It's the rad 13. So I'm going to multiply by rad 13 over rad 13. And let's see what that gives me. So 3 on the top. Again, I'm just multiplying. I'll highlight what I'm multiplying so you can see. I'm highlighting that right there. That's what I'm multiplying. So 3 is out front, and then 3 times 13 is 39. And on the bottom, I have 2, and then root 13 times root 13 would be 13. 
So let's see, three root 39, and 39 I don't think I can draw a tree for. Three and 13, nope, they're both prime. Over two times 13 is not 36, it's 26. And the last thing I would check is can this number out here reduce with this number? And I don't think three and 26 can reduce. So the sine of theta, which is what they were asking me about, is equal to three rad 39 over 26, okay? So I hope that made sense for you. Um, I hope this way of doing notes is okay because right now my document camera doesn't wanna record anything. So hopefully this works out. Um, so there's that. So you can take a screenshot if you need it. Again, check my Zoom hours for if you have any questions over this. Happy study.